Hi, my name is Brian Thompson, and I run the website batty.com. That's B-A-T-E-E.com, where I show Corvette owners how to fix their own electronics. We also sell the parts you'll need, and if you'd like, we'll do the repairs for you. Today in the shop, we have a 1984 Corvette digital instrument panel, and it needs a lot of repairs, and we're just going to work through all of those. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is connect our bench test power cable to the cluster. This is a product that we sell. This can be uh, very useful for um, powering up the cluster while it's outside of the car. We have four red wires that are each connected to the 12 volt supply. We have six black wires, which are ground. We're going to connect the ground wires to pins D1, D3, A1, A6, A8, and A10. We're going to connect the positive leads to pins D5, C16, and D16. We'll have one leftover 12 volt line for testing later. The place where I'm, I'm getting these pin numbers is actually marked on the cluster. If you look down into these cavities, you'll see the, the rows. This, this row is D, this row is C, and pin one is uh, is marked on this end, pin 16 is marked on this end, and here we see row A, row B, and again pin 1 is on this end, pin 12 is on this end. With the bench test cable, uh, you'll get a chart that talks about uh, the pin numbering on each of these, so if you can't see it clearly in the video, uh, you'll be able to see it on that diagram. So the other end of the test cable is connected to uh, a 12 volt battery, cigarette lighter, or 12 volt wall adapter, doesn't matter. We're gonna go ahead and power that on at this time. And what we see is that the cluster lights up, but essentially the information is unreadable. And the reason the information is unreadable is because the, the polarizing film on the LCD panels has faded what we should see is that um, all of the segments on the instrument panel and all of the segments in the numbers light up all at the same time for about two seconds and then the bar graphs will drop to zero and the numerical readout will drop to zero. So this is a sample of polarizing film that we use to restore these. Um, you can get a free sample by going to batty.com We'll even pay for the shipping. One of the things we can do with this is test to see if the panel is really working. Okay, we're recording in a dark room. I'm gonna go ahead and shine a small flashlight in the dimmer port of the, the uh, cluster just to go ahead and, and have it operate at full brightness. Okay, so the sun faded panels look pretty much clear. Um, we, can, we can see the colorations, uh, but we, we absolutely cannot see the information. We can't see the, the individual segments on the bar graph. and We can't see the individual segments in the number panel here. But if we take our polarizing film sample and we put it in front of the defective display, we may have to rotate it slightly. We may have to look at it from an extreme angle to the top or the side, but we should be able to see the numerical readout. If so, that's a very good sign that your LCD panels have faded and that the polarizing film kit that we sell will fix the problem. Cluster contains a, uh, a photo cell. It's located in the top left corner. The photo cell looks at the brightness of the interior of the car and decides how bright the cluster should be. If yours is bright all of the time, um, there might be a problem with the photo cell. 
If yours is dark all of the time, there might be a problem with the photo cell. Typical signs that the photo cell needs to be replaced would be um, that the, the lighting is dark, but you can still read all of the information on the cluster when you shine a flashlight at it. When we shine a light into the dim report, the cluster should run at full brightness, and this one appears to be operating properly. When we cover the port, we should see, you might have to wait for a little while, some of the later models take a, a while to, to dim and to brighten, but eventually you should see that the gauges get very dark. At no time should the light bulbs go out completely, they should still be lit, just very dimly. Okay, the next thing we'll check while the uh, instrument panel is powered up is, are all the light bulbs working? So we see that each of the four illumination bulbs is working. It's not very bright right now. If we shine a flashlight in it, they'll brighten up. I can also see that one of these is dimmer than the other three. It's this one right here. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on camera, but I, I'm definitely seeing that this is a weak light bulb. While we're working inside the instrument panel is a great time to change out these light bulbs. The factory light bulbs can cause serious damage to your instrument panel. They can melt some of the plastic that's behind these, uh, these LCD panels that make the color and that diffuse the light. And um, the good news is that in 2013, better light bulbs are available. We sell a xenon light bulb kit which runs much, much cooler than the factory bulbs and which should cause much less damage. You should consider replacing the illumination bulbs with the new uh, cooler running xenon bulb kit that we sell. Um, the kit includes four new illumination bulbs. It includes the sockets to install those, those uh, bulbs. And it includes the three bulbs that we use for turn signal indicators and for high beam indicator. You see, I still have the uh, the cluster connected to my, my bench test cable, but it is absolutely disconnected on the other end so that nothing is powered up right now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, now that it's not powered on, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take a 730 seconds socket or nut driver, and I'm going to remove the five screws on the back of the case. On an 84, there's typically another screw right here. This one happens to be missing. And I'm going to put those parts someplace safe so that I don't lose them. We'll lift the back cover off. This is the top board, this is the logic board, this is the odometer, and we see how the odometer is connected. This is the 12-pin internal power supply connector that we have so much trouble with. This is the power supply board on an 84 to 88. This is going to be a separate board, and on, a, uh, on an 89 this will be integrated into the logic board. What we're looking for is anything that looks out of sorts. Uh, I don't see any leaking capacitors. I don't see any charred or burn marks, which typically occur around these components here. One thing we can do without removing any more components is check the power supply. Um, the, the power supply outputs 5 volts to support the processor and ROM and other support components. And the way we can measure that is by measuring the two terminals of this capacitor. If we look, we'll see a, a white stripe on this side. That tells us this is the negative terminal. That makes the other terminal positive. We'll go ahead and power on the cluster. We'll set the meter to volts DC. And we see 4.9981 volts. So that tells me 
the power supply is, is outputting the proper voltage. The second thing we'll do is we'll set to volts or millivolts AC and we're going to measure the ripple output of this power supply. And what we see is 2.67 millivolts of ripple. That's very good. So again, that tells me this power, power supply is working the way that it should. When we're checking the AC ripple voltage, if, if we saw a reading of, if we saw a reading that was uh, 0 0.5 volts or more, that would tell us that uh, we had bad filter capacitors in the power supply and that it needed to be rebuilt. What we see right now is that it's, it's bouncing between uh, 2 and 5 millivolts of ripple. That's 0 0.002 to 0 0.005 volts, and that's just fine. We'll go ahead and disconnect the we'll go ahead and disconnect the the cluster from the battery now. Repair or repair the LCD panel, replace the uh, the dimmer, or replace the uh, internal power connector. We'll need to do some further disassembly. There are there are seven screws which are holding the logic board in place. We'll go ahead and remove the odometer connector. We'll remove those seven screws. And put them someplace safe. stubborn so I'll just pull it out with a pair of pliers. Okay, the next step is to lift the board from here and from here at the same time and we'll just work it back and forth until that connector pops free and then again we'll set that to the side. Now what we see is the bottom display driver board. Again we see the other half of the 12 volt power connector we see the four illumination bulbs and three indicator bulbs. We'll go ahead and remove the odometer by removing three more screws. Again, 7 seconds inch. And then it pulls out. If we're replacing the bulbs, We'll go ahead and remove the bulbs by rotating them counterclockwise and pulling them out. Sometimes we might need a pair of needle nose pliers to rotate them. One thing we can do at this point is we can check the photo cell to see if it's functioning properly. I have a multimeter. It's set to measure resistance. And we're going to check pins 2 and 3. Right now the photo cell is pointing down at the darkness so it should be a very high resistance and in fact we're measuring 150 mega ohms. Okay, we'll measure those again with the light in place. What we see is that it's measuring 460 ohms. Anything under about 65k ohms in brightness, in bright daylight conditions, means that the dimmer is functioning properly. If it's more than 65k, the dimmer circuitry will start to, um, to dim the, the cluster. And um, if, if, it, if you measure that in, in daylight, it's time to replace the dimmer photo cell, which is right here. Um, if you purchase our uh, dimmer repair kit, it comes with a new dimmer photo cell, it comes with the power transistor, and it comes with this capacitor. So what we see is the bottom display driver board. We have access to the illumination bulbs. We also have access to the turn signal and high beam indicator bulbs. 
if we are repairing the uh, the dimmer photo cell, if we are replacing the light bulbs, uh, we don't need to disassemble this any further. To remove the light bulbs, sometimes they're in their hearts, so we're going to take some needle nose pliers. We're going to rotate these counterclockwise about a sixteenth of a turn and pull them up. Sometimes you can take them out with your fingers. These are a little bit tougher. We use the pliers again. Again, we're going to rotate them about a sixteenth of a turn counterclockwise and they just pop right out. Okay. Now what we're going to check for is uh, just clean bright contacts where those light bulbs are installed. These appear fine, but if yours are corroded, if they're green, if they're uh, kind of a gray color, we'd use a small brass brush and we just clean them up like that.